Good morning, internet friends. Uh, it's just going to be a random one, this, to be honest. It's ages since I did a behind the scenes video, so I figured I may as well tell you what I'm up to. I mean, I've got no specific plans to test anything because it's not massively relevant, but there might be some, there might end up being some useful stuff we could pull out of this. Uh, riding the Lyric. Now on the pace because the pike is getting looked at because it was spikier pike than it should have been. This feels absolutely stunning. Got to say, uh, the far less chatter, far less spike. I mean, it feels, it's, it's still quite a taut damping feel on it, but so smooth over the small stuff and then so controlled over the big stuff and absolutely silent as well uh, with that new non-bladder damping system in there, Charger 3. Feels amazing on the jank out here at Stainburn. Uh, but I've not done a full back-to-back -back on this versus 36 and also I want to jump on the old Lyric in the same format and see what they feel like head-to-head -head. just well I just wanted to give a proper thorough all-round review really before I uh, start spilling my guts into the camera and onto the page but yeah this if this is what the Pike should have felt like then this is yeah this is really genuinely is next level and still loving the uh, super deluxe ultimate damper on the rear and absolutely loving the pace as a complete package now it's back together uh so gonna do another run on this and then i've got some playing around to do on a canyon spectral 125 that i've got in the back of the van so let's crack on right just a bit of that's a woodcock <laughs> there you go rare bird moment but just gonna Drop in here, just, just check the halo. That was badly done. Right, just need to check. Oh god, I couldn't have done it worse. Yeah, basically just need to check the progression on the front and rear. That's what I was talking about. But how are we doing? Yeah, to be honest, pancaking off that seems to have put the little red rings where they were supposed to be, so probably leave it like this. I mean, there was no reason not to. It's just always worth double checking, isn't it? I didn't feel any harshness to either end, so it looks like high speed's roughly where it is. I have two happy days. Dropping in off the map. It's funny, this fork still feels bright and relatively high. I mean, that's the whole thing with this new low speed damping strategy from RockShox. It actually works pretty differently. I mean, it doesn't, it works exactly the same, but the way it feels when you're tuning is very different. You know, you don't wind on low speed and suddenly get a much stiffer, harsher fork, like most low speed circuits. Ah to put the fender on it just holds it up more in the travel just makes it feel a bit crisper a bit sharper and yeah basically it just alters ride height which is exactly what it should do and together with such a precise frame like this base combination together feels absolutely awesome I'm just going to spin up the road because I shot some actual fork footage so if I do some talking over that splice that in you have a bit of variety special right so let's turn it around taking the red return and you can really feel it I'll call out where I mean hey there's a ton of support through there and it just feels like every time you just wait the fork it just feels rides a little bit higher I mean it's longer than I should have on this bike but just that it just catches that so accurately and then around these berms I hope I'm hitting it at the same speed <laughs> or else it's going to be out of sequence probably just shut up and concentrate heels down but deliberately running wide oh, hey, there you go there's that little racing Ralph spit out yes just the precision and god I'm saying precision a lot but that's kind of the real take home on this fork 
is how quiet, controlled and damped it feels as we hop for that bit. Or not, in case it wasn't lined up on the video, but just, and it really does feel like a totally premium suspension package now. This model year 23 RockShox. You just want to ride it super, super hard on the front, but I didn't then. It's a pretty mellow run, but it really rewards you pushing hard on the nose of the bike. Right, change your bike. A very different vibe already. This is Spectral 125, which, you know, 150, 125 is actually pretty similar to the pace. It's at the moment, it's running the DHX in the back. So I'm trying to find a bike that this Fox coil shot works in and oh, it, still I don't know it just, just doesn't turn in that well just like I say it's just that mid-stroke is just really missing from it I mean crazy plush ridiculously plush it's like running a plus tyre with custard in it in terms of softness but just nothing push against in the corners and this is a more progressive setup than the pace so I was kind of hoping it would work all right and it, you know look down now seems to be pedaling all right but the sag's right and everything spring weight's right as soon as you start driving on it just gutless and then when you start adding low speed spiky spiky anyway get up top and the other thing I'm playing with today on the spectral is wheel sizes so comes with 29 both ends of the standard but hot oh, alright mate cheers thanks very much I'm running well, I've swapped the wheels out, got a pair of MBs in it at the moment, and then asked the guy in a Hutchinson Griffiths on the back, both in 29, but I've got a Hunt 27.5 rear wheel it's in the van, so we're going to change to that and see how we go with that setup on the same run and a pig's ear of that, I know that much right, obligatory photo stop at the bench for the wheel size shot right gonna drop in off Paddy and Jim's purely because it's one of the tightest sections off the top here so that should really bring out any difference between the wheel sizes in terms of dynamic feel on the bike. I mean, it's something I've done before and I'm fairly convinced by it, but this 125 is actually, for a bike with only 125 of travel, is pretty tall in the BB. So although I could actually uh, change the geometry flip chip, I'm not gonna do it, just cause I think it'll be feel better hunkered down. But anyway, let's see. I mean, this Griffiths isn't the fastest rolling tire anyway, so. It's felt fairly sluggish coming up here, but I have to say, on this kind of stuff, where it's like slow speed gank, DHX, you know, that plushness feels pretty good, although there is a lot of rattle. Keep checking that it's not preload on the coil spring, but it's not. Just a little kind of chunter in the damping on it. <sighs> anyway. No, I think I'm just going to run up the road, do a red return, just for the sake of it, just so I've got something faster and flowier to benchmark on. So obviously, a run like that is gagging for a smaller back wheel on the back, in theory. So we'll just see how this plays out on a red run. Right, so we've got all the low speed off on the back now. <laughs> Max, I mean, didn't have much on. And uh, you got to remember on that box, even though they've numbered the dials now, 
thick as fox always. I mean, to be fair, it feels lovely through there. You know, it lands that really, really well. Feels I've got carpet slippers on. But, like I said, the fox, even the fox guile's a bit tricky to get used to because, because they count their damping out from maximum 10 is actually the least amount of damping. That to be fair, this is the best run I've had on this coil and it still pops. Yeah, actually, not so bad at all there. But then these Envy Foundation wheels are super quiet anyway. And the Griffiths is a great carcass. And then I've got an acid guy on the front, so rubber and rim about as high control as you want anyway. But let's do the switch out and see how that goes. Right, so, oh, hello. <laughs> There's a cracking jewel. There you go, I guess that, if anything's gonna prove that this setup genuinely turns in faster, it's the fact I cut the inside off the first corner and nearly fell off. You know what? I mean, I know it all says it doesn't take long. Oh, I'm loving, oh. I mean, because this is interesting. It's almost identical wheel. It's a Hunt High Impact Carbon. Again, very fast pickup free hub. Quite a docile feeling build, for want of a better word, in the same way that the uh, Envy is. 2.5 Hutchinson Griffiths again, both at 17 PSI. I mean, God, to be fair, I've not checked the exact internal diameters. One might be 30, one might be 31, but yeah, close as damn it. But this already feels a lot more fun. It's a lot more poppy. Interesting, very interesting. I was expecting to suffer on the climb in mullet, especially as last time I came up here, I had more compression damping on, but actually feels better. Oh, oh. And I like having my feet close to the ground as well. Plus, this has such an aggressive seat angle. It's Spectral 125. It really hasn't minded being knocked back a bit. Oh, felt so good dropping in through there. Definitely a neater fit than either of the double 29s over in here today. This was not the part of the ride I was expecting it to be good on. Unexpected bonus alert. Oh, this is only gonna be like a, a one run or two experiment. I think this may become uh, a longer term thing. It's funny, I just bumped into a lad here in between filming. He was riding a Bronson he had on demo. And he was loving it. He was going straight from the car park back to stiff and buying it. So yeah, mullet is definitely a thing. And it's really is becoming dominant on downhill now as well. A few people running double 29 at Fort Bill just for the roll, but normally 27.5 rear is the way. Same amount of bikes, smaller rear wheel. So why not when you're the engine? See how it goes over the patter bumps up here. I got up. It's definitely more of a catch and kick up with the smaller wheel, as you'd expect. Pops the 
saddle and the bike end of the back up more because obviously the tyre is hitting it at a sharper angle even with a big 2.5 like this it's not it's more of a slap than a gradual ease up than there is on the 29 might just have a play around with the rebound see even though the wheel waits very very close it feels like it's a touch faster than it needs to be now touch livelier at the back end we'll see well for now I mean it's not pedalling great but to be fair it's pretty damn sluggish with a 29 double on and if anything it feels a little bit brighter and not as muffled psychologically it's a better pedal basically feels like I've got more low speed on in the old fashioned sense and I've actually got less than the last time I pedalled up here so let's crack on let's get some gravity involved that should be interesting but even there just just naturally just carves in really tight she just brought that back end slightly shorter and because it is minimal it's amazing the difference it makes all right right start of everything down to the bench it even feels like it's responding better to each pedal stroke yeah no nerves about railing that one sometimes a bit of doubt as to whether you need to brake but not with this front end was well inside nice hunkered down through there it's feeling like a win so far I think this bike could definitely do with a short stem got 50 on the standard uh, I'm loving mullet 125 right now this is where Oh, <laughs> maybe some ground clearance issues there. Wait, and there as well. I guess that's one of the downsides of running mullet because it didn't do that on the last run, but oh, so much. He says, nearly losing it, unclipped. Yeah, but felt like much more responsive to body English. I've got more back end movement through there, definitely. So, yeah, chainring suffering. That's one thing to talk about. I just feel myself moving about more on the bike. I'm more aware that the saddle's sort of doing more of a dance between we can't quit pants. And then through here, it's just heels down, front end pops a bit quicker. It's very much all positive. Yeah, even my finish flicks are more flicky and more finish. I mean, yeah, it fell off the line a bit more there, but definitely feels more playful and involving through there but brap, brap, brap. and not any harsher on that for sure see how it does on the red run there's more square edges but felt that, that very felt what <laughs> and that DHX is even creaking now but I have to say, it felt a load better coming down on that section. A load, load better. I'm going to this chap. See if I can help. Right, red run in. It's never a last run, is it? I just, funny, I'm just already can feel I'm kind of attacking more 
Oh yeah, just bop, 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 bop. Yeah, motorbike noises. It's officially making motorbike noises. A little bit of drift there. Pop it over that route. Yeah, see, look at me go. Lifting the front wheel. And I have to say, this back, this shock actually feels really good in here now. I just added a couple of turns of preload to it. That back end just... Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, I've, I might have made some... I'm going to really enjoy it. Proper little... Dirty hooligan bike, yes! Easy clean on that. Popping onto that. Yeah, normally run wide on that, so... Oh, it's all feeling great. And actually, wasn't feeling too wallowy in the mid -truck. Interesting. I wonder if it's just a change of weight distribution slightly, but... Oh. Right, let's do a little sign off. Get into some clear air. Right, so that's been a proper mixed bag. I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching some of my thought processes, testing processes going on. This, <laughs> this is I'm proper excited about now. Mullet Spectral 125. I thought it might be good and it feels very, very good. I'm actually gonna, I'll measure it at home because there's no point measuring BB height changes and stuff there. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll throw some numbers in the captions at roughly this point to let you know how it's actually changed the angles and stuff. And I might even flip the chip to see how that goes so it gives so it's more of a direct wheel comparison but yeah definitely a work in progress the shock that's the best it's felt so far it didn't feel like it was completely well gutless through the turns on that last run uh, a bit more preload on it seemed to help there uh, and you know fork feels great acid guy feels super you know and the griffiths as well so what i'm going to do next actually i'm going to throw some kush core in this been meaning to try kush core for ages but Good old Pat has finally bent my arm and he sent me some. Uh, so I'm going to be on Cushcore because, again, it's another thing that Downhill was rave about. And so let's get a bit gravity on the channel. Uh, I think he sent me the extra light anyway, or ultra light, whichever, whatever they call it, because he knows I am not the biggest hitter in the world, but certainly interesting to see how that plays out. And obviously, going back to the beginning of the video there, we've got first impressions on that awesome new Rock Shocks Lyric and some continuation riding on the Boggle Hole Pace. And we've got some interesting, can you spot the difference, pictures pulled out of this. We've got a reel, which I'll try and find some suitably horrible early 90s hardcore punk or industrial music to put it against. And I'd better get home to the family. But no, this has been a really productive session, actually. I was a bit bored. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I mean, my mates were out to play today, so... I thought, well, let's make it really work for work. Uh, and it definitely has done. So yeah, and also, obviously, I'll be bringing you tests on the Envy wheels and the Hunt wheels. I've actually had them around for ages. I should have shot the videos a long time ago. Uh, so but what I need to actually, what I need you to do, if you're, if you're watching these videos and you see something you're interested in on any of the bikes I'm running, just ask. I'm far better at responding to comments than I am getting my arse in gear myself. So if you know I'm testing something, if, even if you've seen it on Instagram, at GuyCaseTV, keep, keep badgering me in the comments and that'll let me know what priority I need to review things in, even if it's only for you. Because actually, I was already going to try this mullet experiment, but someone got in touch on, it was either Insta or YouTube, and they said, I'm getting a 125, I've got a 27.5 bike at the moment, I'm just interested as to whether or not to keep a 27.5 rear wheel. No, definitely, he's definitely getting the thumbs up on that. Yeah, I clobbered the uh, bottom bracket a couple of times, so maybe maybe I will go up on the chip. Uh, did take a couple of chaining gouges. But to be fair, the first one, I hadn't done that line on the first one, so it might have caught there anyway. Either, there's a lot. There's always a lot going on in here. It might not always make itself clear on the way out, but there's always a lot of thinking going on. And that's what's fascinating about testing mountain bikes, to be honest. So, uh, massive thanks to Giro, Jolbo, P.E.'s Crud because I could have done with the uh, crud catcher on the front today. Thanks to Steve at Can't Quit. I'm, I mean, as you can see, full Can't Quit glory today. Oh, these pants are just awesome. Bloody love his kit. Uh, I mean, I should gyro, gyro, 
uh, all the time in theory, but I actually <laughs> I actually put something into the contract with Gyro when they sponsor the channel that I'm allowed to wear Can't Quit on a uh, regular basis because that Steve and his stuff just needs representing. Proper legend. Uh, go check out the channel. Uh, and massive thanks to my Patreon supporters who pledge a small monthly amount, uh, which really helps justify random moments like this. Keeps the channel growing, keeps me able to buy equipment like the new GoPro 10 I'm filming on today, and just generally makes life a little easier as a YouTuber. So if you really like what I'm doing, please consider joining me on Patreon uh, for a very small monthly pledge. It's like £2.50 a month minimum, and you'll get exclusive ad-free and early edits as a thank you. But for now, uh, click for sub subscriptions if you're not already a subscriber. Be awesome to get to 25k, we're not far off now, so bully your mates into clicking it as well. I mean, I'll get your dog, your cat, your mother, whoever, to click that subscription button. To be honest, at this point, I'm not fussy. Click for notifications so they all know when the next video comes out, because like I say, there's more stuff to do on this. And then, uh, yeah, what else? Give it a thumbs up, like. Now I'd better guess this pump track because there's someone coming around. So, uh, yeah, see you on the trails like this, lad. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Draft.